There are roughly 10,000 species of birds alive in the world today. Throughout their long history, many of these birds have developed some of the most incredible physical adaptations for survival, including various different shaped beaks and unique foot structures for different lifestyles. So today, in this video, we're going to be examining some of the most interesting and surprising anatomical features in a variety of different bird species, in particular those which can be considered impressive weaponry. These weapons can be as diverse as they are powerful, from razor-sharp talons, spiked wings, hooked bills, and even serrated bills to name a few. So without further ado, let's delve into bird weaponry. Vultures, such as this Lamagaya pictured here, eagles, buzzards, hawks, kites, harriers, falcons, and a few other species, all belong to the family of predatory birds known as birds of prey. One of the most distinctive and recognisable features shared by these birds is their hooked beaks. The razor-sharp hook on the end of the upper mandible of this osprey, for example, is designed to pierce and tear through flesh while feeding, whilst the scissor-like edges of the upper mandible and the lower mandible also help cut the meat into manageable pieces. In most birds of prey, however, particularly eagles and hawks, for example, the hooked beak is primarily used as a feeding tool to tear apart and consume prey. Falcons, such as this female peregrine, for example, have proportionally stronger jaws for their size though, and are also equipped with a tooth-like appendage on their upper mandible, which they will use to bite through the necks of their prey. The hooked beaks of extinct and living raptors alike is a valuable tool for survival when it comes to dismembering prey or also dispatching it. They are, however, not the only family of birds which have developed hooked beaks for survival, another of which is the parrot family. Though the range of behaviours in which parrots use their beaks is very different. Larger parrot species, such as this macaw for example, have especially large and powerful beaks, which they use for a variety of different tasks. Large macaws like this have an exceptional bite force, said to be as powerful as some large dog breeds, and capable of inflicting serious damage if they are provoked or in defence. Their large beaks can also effortlessly tear apart food and crack open the hardest of nuts. As well as feeding, self-defence, tree climbing and nest building, another behaviour that large macaws use their large beaks for is cracking open rocks to extract mineral salts as a part of their diet, which their beaks are well adapted. The second main physical feature that identifies a bird as a raptor is their powerful gripping feet and large sharp talons. With a special locking mechanism in the tendons of their toes, raptor feet can grab onto prey without slipping their grip and generating a tremendous amount of force. In birds of prey such as eagles and hawks for example, grabbing the prey and driving the talons through vital organs is their main killing strategy which can kill prey very quickly. In some of the largest eagle species, such as the golden and harpy eagle for example, as well as this massive extinct Harst's eagle, the grip generated from their massive talons is tremendous, rivalling or even exceeding the bite force of some large mammalian predators. Eagles, hawks and falcons have a foot design referred to as anisodactyl, which demonstrates the three toes pointing forward and one hind toe or hallux pointing backwards as seen by this image. The feet of the osprey, however, as pictured here, are quite different. Although it is still a raptor, the osprey is categorised as belonging to a slightly separate part within the bird of prey family tree, partly because of a specific anatomical adaptation. This is because, unlike other diurnal birds of prey, the osprey has a reversible outer toe, meaning it can switch between an anisodactyl foot shape 
and a zygodactyl foot shape. In other words, it can move its toe in a certain way so that it has two toes pointing forward and two toes pointing backwards. The osprey even has a sandpaper-like texture to the underside of its toes, thanks to spicules, which are scales ending in a point. These features, combined with its giant hook-like talons and raptorial grip, enables the osprey to better handle its slippery fish prey. The sheer variety in the shapes and sizes a bird's beak can adapt to truly is astounding in nature. Here we see two different representatives of different bird species, toucans and megansas, which both have beaks of a serrated nature. Both of these beaks are used for very different purposes, but one can't deny that they are definitely very formidable tools indeed. Both the upper and lower mandible of this red-breasted merganza, along with other merganza species, are used primarily for fishing. These small but very sharp serrations enable mergansas to grip hold of their slippery underwater prey, making them very effective aquatic hunters. It is said by some, however, that mergansas may also use their serrated beaks as weapons, for self-defense for example. Toucans and their relatives also have serrated beaks, albeit the serrations on both their upper and lower mandibles are quite different in shape, giving them an almost wicked look. As a family of birds which spend most of their time in the treetops of rainforest habitats, toucans largely are depicted feeding on nuts and fruit. They do indeed feed on a large amount of these items, which their large serrated beaks are well adapted for consumption. Contrary to popular belief, however, toucans are not strict vegetarians and will also use their large serrated beaks for killing and dismembering small animals, such as smaller birds, mammals and reptiles. Larger toucan species, particularly the toco toucan as pictured here, can also be surprisingly aggressive and will also use their bills for self-defence. Here are two examples of bird species which have developed perhaps the most unique of all bird adaptations, spiked wings. On this specimen, belonging to an African spur wing goose, the spikes or spurs are formed around the wrist area of what would be the bird's wing, in this case the bird's thumb. In the second specimen, belonging to the southern screamer, however, there are two spur-like projections, first on the bird's thumb, and the second developing on what would be the bird's two fused finger digits. These unique and formidable structures are almost like a remnant on what would be the claws on the forelimbs of the bird's dinosaurian ancestors. In spur-winged geese, for example, these spines can make for some quite effective defensive weapons, and they can strike enemies with them, inflicting potential damage. On a somewhat tangent from the subject of spiked wings appearing in birds, it should also be noted that all geese, including the spurwing geese, also have a unique oral adaptation. Geese have cartilaginous teeth, or tomia, on their beaks, which combined with their somewhat horrifying looking serrated tongues, are used primarily for cutting up vegetation. However, anyone who has been bitten by a goose, myself included, can attest to the fact that geese can also sometimes use their mouths as defensive weapons. Finally, we shall look at another form of auxiliary weaponry featured in birds, this time spurs or spikes forming on the legs. This is an adaptation which is seen primarily in the family of game birds, ranging from captive chickens to pheasants as seen here. These leg spurs are used often in combat, primarily between members of the same species, 
such as when these two pheasants fight for the right to mate, or for territorial reasons. They will sometimes use these leg spurs against other species as well, however, as anyone who has encountered an aggressive rooster can attest to. As displayed by these museum specimens, the spurs have a bony interior and move directly outwards from the tarsus, the area of bone just before the ankle. The bony interior is covered by a keratin sheath, much like a claw or nail, and this can at times become overgrown and in the case of domesticated roosters and chickens, does sometimes need to be trimmed. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this discussion on various bird weaponry. There are many more species of birds out there with all kinds of crazy adaptations worthy of discussion. Until next time, I'll see you in the next one.